I would like to welcome you to our worship service as we gather on this Trinity Sunday. We're thankful that you have joined us wherever you may be on this morning. And let us now come together in our responsive call to worship. Mighty wind, who danced over the deep and surveyed the shapeless void. Dance. Eternal artist, who formed us in your likeness and claimed us as kin. Reform and refine us to be bearers of your blessing. Holy Trinity, Creator, Christ, Spirit, who gathered the waters.
God's glory shines always around us, but we must regularly clear our eyes of the clouds of sin in order to fully experience God's love and glory. So let us lay down our burdens as we join our hearts and our voices in our unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you send us to make disciples of all nations, but we focus our energies inward and shy away from sharing the good news in word and deed. You charge us to teach your commandments, but we struggle to obey them and neglect to model them for others. You assure us of your abiding presence, but we doubt this promise and disregard your spirit, denying the power you give us to do your work. Amen. Now let us join together in our responsive assurance of pardon. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned. And fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by God's grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hi everyone. This morning I'm coming to you from the beach. And the reason that I'm here is I wanted to be next to this big giant ocean to remind you of God's creation. God created this amazing ocean. He created all of the little tiny pieces of sand on this beach. And God also created us. It says in the Bible that God created us in his image. Now last week we talked about the Holy Spirit and that Jesus' gift to his disciples and to all of us was putting God within us through the Holy Spirit so that we could go out and spread God's word. Now this week, our Bible story talks about Jesus gathering his disciples together, and he tells them that they need to go out and make disciples of other people that they meet. They need to go out and they need to spread the word of God's love. Now more than ever, we need to do that. We need to live as God wants us to, and we need to spread that love to all of our brothers and sisters. Not just the brothers and sisters that live in our house with us, but all of the people that we meet, our neighbors, the people that we don't know, everybody that we come in contact, we need to spread that love. We need to be God's hands and his feet on this earth, and we need to spread love. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for our wonderful planet and for blessing us with your love. Help us to be your disciples and spread that love to all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Janet Foster. I am pleased to present this minute for mission on behalf of the Church's Outreach Committee. In a matter of days this spring, thousands of Morris County residents lost their jobs or found their ability to work outside the home greatly reduced because childcare centers and schools shut down. As a result, they cannot feed their families or pay their housing costs. This is not a failure on the part of these workers many of whom were in marginally paid jobs. Ignoring their very real plight will be a failure of our commitment to the gospel. In response to COVID-19, Morris Area New Jersey Together leaders, the Morris Area Clergy Council, Wind of the Spirit, and our allies at Cornerstone Family Programs and Morristown Neighborhood House have been working to address rent insecurity in Morris County. As part of this work, and with the help of the Community Foundation of New Jersey, a rent relief program has been established, coordinated by Cornerstone Family Programs and Morristown Neighborhood House. The fund is for residents of Morris County, regardless of citizenship status. It will offer a portion of the rent needed and will prioritize those in greatest need. Individuals will need to show loss of income payments will be made directly to the landlord. All funds donated will directly support families in need. 
please consider donating to that fund. The Outreach Committee has made Local Rent Relief our mission focus for June. Donations can be made online through the New Jersey Together website. You can find a link in the description of this video or in the PCM website, in this month's Tower Tidings, and in your daily church mail. Many people are suffering in the cause of keeping everyone safe and distanced. Do not let yourself become distant to the needs of your neighbors. Remember Jesus' words, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers and sisters, that you did for me. Thank you. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, we do not live by bread and wine, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Christ's Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am always with you to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Disciples are charged by Jesus to go to go into the world and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To go empowered by the triune God. Being a disciple is not sedentary. Being a disciple is not falling prey to inertia that keeps us in one place. Being a disciple is about moving moving in the power of the Creator, in the presence of the One who came to be among us and won the victory over sin and death, and to be empowered by the Spirit that defeats anything that can come against the body of Christ. Now that introduction could be preached on any Trinity Sunday, any Trinity Sunday where the gospel lesson was from the Great Commission. But when we come on this Trinity Sunday 2020, we must do the work of conceptualization and contextualization in our society. What is currently taking place? Because as we prepare to take those first wobbly steps during a pandemic, we also are so aware that a pandemic that has been in our presence for the last few months is truly not even in comparison to the disease of racism that has been with us for centuries. 
How is it that we go into our world as disciples at this time? Now, if we do the work of contextualization in our own world, it's so tempting to do that in our own lives and to bring it down just to our experience. That's where we have a major issue. As a white European American talking about how we move into this context, I, like all whites in our country, are entangled. The tentacles of racism continue to be present in our lives and to wrap around various parts of our lives. Even as we try to work on eradicating this presence, we have to admit that none are immune. And so on this day, I have invited someone to come and share. Uh, I've asked Clarence Curry Jr., a elder in our church, an active member of our choir. Now, Clarence is no stranger to being up front here. Typically, he is sitting in our choir up front. Uh, Clarence currently is the vice moderator of the Morris County Human Relations Commission. And I invited Clarence to work with me on this sermon, to share a perspective that I think is so critical for all of us in this day, as we go in the power of the triune God. Clarence, I have a few questions that I would like to ask you, and I'm going to follow the outline of the Trinity uh, on this Trinity Sunday as I ask these questions. So staying with our theme for today, and as we consider the Creator and the creative powers that brought us into being, What are some of the historic forces that have brought us to where we find ourselves today? Thank you, Dave. How appropriate it is that in our lectionary, Trinity Trinity Sunday follows Pentecost. As the Holy Spirit manifested itself, all those gathered heard their own language and understood one another. So here we see bringing all his people together, speaking to them as one through the Holy Spirit. After calling his people to unity in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are given our mission, commanding not only to baptize, but also to teach and to obey. So the Creator called us to both teach and to obey. At the center of Christ's ministry is love and justice. Justice is referenced in the Bible 1,576 times, combined in the Old and New Testament, and in 1,379 verses. Justice is mentioned twice as many times as love or heaven, notwithstanding that love is the greatest gift. As humans and Christians, we think about justice within the context of our particular historical and cultural traditions. However, biblical justice speaks to a broader conceptualization of justice than the Western concept. That dichotomy has contributed more than anything else as to why we find ourselves stuck in this place a place of saying we believe in justice for all, but not so in practice, yet feeling totally okay because it's consistent with our worldview, but not in the biblical definition and in our call. So simply, we are comfortable invoking commitment to the concept of Western justice while extremely uncomfortable applying the Creator's view. Moreover, we refuse to listen or to hear from those whose historical and or cultural experiences are different from the Western norm. This disparity 
has always existed, and it likely always will. But God, God called us as Christians to his worldview, which more than often than not uncomfortably conflicts with that of the world. Thank you, Clarence. That truly was insightful to know how God created us and how often we are called to justice, to go and share justice and be part of making justice happen. But when we think of, again, the Trinity and the incarnate God with us, Christ here, we know that Christ came and won the victory over sin and death. Um, In our current day, why does it continue to be so difficult to win a victory over the sin of racism? Dave, the major obstacle to overcoming any sin is denial. Overcoming sin begins with confession and denial or refusal to acknowledge and surrender a sin is a sure way to not defeat it. You see, like all sin, there are a myriad of explanations and justifications as to why it's not a problem. For example, some of my best friends are black and people of color, and they often even visit my home. There are, there are African Americans or people in my family through marriage, and I love and I embrace them. I am colorblind. If they could all just be like, fill in the name with the name of any person that you may know, person of color, if they were just like them, they'd be fine. Oh, I love gospel music. I just love to go to the black church and I worship and I just have a great old time. I even love R&B. Why can't they just see all the progress that's been made? My goodness, all lives matter. I love filling the name of an African-American athlete or an entertainer, but why don't they just stick to their own profession? Do what you're hired to do and stop talking about this stuff. Stop bringing it up. Plus, he or she is a millionaire. And finally, there are literally hundreds of things that are done in meetings, social gatherings, rehearsals that are said or done that are outright offensive to African Americans, feeling left out, feeling overlooked, and they dare not bring it to your attention. I hear what you're saying, Clarence, the the depth of denial and the rationalizations that people have created, again, in our own context that keep us from truly confessing that sin. Again, as we keep with our Trinitarian outline, the the Spirit empowers us uh, to go. Uh, It was with the disciples to move forward, to not be sedentary. Um, What do you see as the way forward for people of faith as we now move into our current context and culture? Dave, we are in a transformational and pivotal time in this country. It is a perfect storm, a pandemic, which is a disease of the lungs, a blatant and casual, hands in his pocket, knee on the neck, video murder of an African-American man at the hand of an officer sworn to serve and protect, even as the man pleaded for his life, and as three other officers either assisted or stood and watched a disease of the heart. And an administration 
that sows the seeds of conflict and division. The time is now to address specific aspects of institutional and systemic racism. That sounds ominous and may result in questions of how can I personally be a part of that? It's so big, it's so large, what can I personally do? Well, here are some things that you can do as you're led by the Holy Spirit. First, listen to African-American people. No, really listen. Hear us without thinking about the dozen of rebuttal comments and the explanations before we can even complete what we're trying to share. Listen, listen without expecting for us and for you to hear what you want to hear and from your tradition and from your expectation. It is us that is living this. So if you really want to be part of the change, you have to listen. You have to hear us. Be open and encouraging to hearing things that will make you very uncomfortable. Because we're really not getting through to you if you're comfortable. Because I'm not. We're not. Educate yourself. Attend sessions where you can hear and learn about what it is and what it has been to be black in this country now and historically. Support. When you hear family, friends, and acquaintances in your circle deflecting, minimizing, making racist comments, engage them, call them out. And then having called them out, educate them. That's why it's important that you get educated first so that you can share and help them have a better understanding. But demand the same things that I'm demanding of you, that they have to listen. And frankly, if they're unwilling to listen, again, denial. You can't confess that which you don't consider to be a problem. Join. Find out what legislation is important to minority communities. Which candidates are embracing and advocating for issues important to improving the lives of minority? Join those organizations. Find out what the issues are and become involved in them. Become spokespersons for them. And finally, as Christians, be righteous. For righteousness begets justice. And as Chris Marshall, author of Biblical uh, Justice, stated, the pursuit of justice must be the primary obligation of the people of God.
as we prepare ourselves to gather around Christ's table. We invite you to be sure to have a bread and a cup handy for you. If you need to pause and go and get that, please do so as we come together to celebrate the Lord's Supper. We gather around this table and around each table where you find yourselves this morning, filled with all our hopes and dreams and longing for a glimpse of the holy. It is here where bread is broken and the cup is shared that we find hope renewal, and inspiration. Here we draw courage for the hard work of discipleship in a world cracked open by pain. Here we encounter the awe-inspiring living God and know ourselves beloved. So come to the table God has prepared, for you are welcome and Christ is here to meet us. Let us now join together in our responsive great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. Eternal and triune God, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. You spoke the world into being, your word became flesh in Jesus Christ, and by your spirit you made us your people. When we were lost in the wilderness, you came as a pillar of fire to lead us. When we were trapped in our own pride, greed, and sin, you sent us your prophets and then your own Son, to call us to repentance and to bring us back to the ways of justice. Therefore, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name, praising you forevermore. Holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Born of Mary, he came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth. He forgave our failures, healed our hurts, and gave himself an utter sacrifice for all those he loved. After three days, you raised him from the dead that we might never die. Therefore, remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this cup and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out the fire of your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may truly be a communion of the body and blood of Christ. Unite us as one people in Christ and set us ablaze with passion for ministry in every place. Fashion us into beacons of hope in a hurting world and keep us faithful in your service no matter how hard the road may become. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 
on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And after he blessed it, he broke it and said, This is my body that is given for you. As often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. And at this time, we now invite you. We pray that you have your elements prepared. And we invite you now to partake of the bread, the body of Christ. And in the same way, after they had eaten, our Savior took the cup. And he poured it out, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. And do so in remembrance of me. For every time we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we do proclaim the saving death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. And so I invite you now to partake of the cup of salvation. And now let us pray. Holy Spirit, you have filled us with your life. Christ, our Savior, you have embraced us in your love. God, our Mother, you have fed us with your grace. Lead us to share your life, your love, and your grace, especially with those who are sick or who are suffering, with those who struggle to pay rent or a mortgage, with those who have no home, with those who are neglected and abused, with those who long for family and are instead alone, with children who do not have a good guide to raise them, and indeed with all in need. In these days, as we watch our cities burn, O Lord, we lament the tragedy, the loss, and the pain. We cry out against the brutality being visited upon human flesh and against the forces that seek to suppress or distort the message of a people long ignored. We pray for the swift arrival of your justice, which wipes out the need for all kinds of violence and which deeply values human life, but especially cherishes those who have been devalued and oppressed for so long. We also recognize, O Lord, that you have so often come to us, your people, as fire. From the burning bush to the smoke of Sinai to the Pentecost tongues of flame, you speak to us and you change us through fire. Use these tumultuous days to burn away all our resistance to changing once and for all the systems that allow these atrocities to happen again and again to our black brothers and sisters. Burn open our ears to hear, truly hear, the cries of the oppressed who have been telling us and telling us of their pain and their fear and their struggle until, unheard still, it overflows into rage and frustration and even violence. Burn off the scales from our eyes that keep us from seeing our own complicity in the racism that grips our nation. Burn open our hearts until, filled with your love and compassion, we cannot help but witness and act as your disciples are always called to witness and to act. And Lord, on this day, we do lift before you all those individuals who are also near and dear to our hearts, who are in need of your touch and your mercy and your grace. We pray for Jamie and Caleb and Evander. We pray for Florence. And we pray for all those we name before you now. Fill them with your goodness and your love and your mercy. Into your hands we entrust all that is of concern this day. Sure that you hear our pleas grateful that your will be done on earth as in heaven. And we pray this in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who indeed taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Dear God, as we prepare to depart, we pray for our churches, our workplaces, our schools, and our communities. We ask for your help in being a light in every place you've given us to walk. Give us care. Give us wisdom as we live and work with one another. Help us to look at one another's needs before our own and to always be ready to serve those around us by the power of your love within us. Even in the every dark and broken place, for the times we feel like we're barely making it through, give us your joy, Lord. Make your grace present and known to us as a powerful presence of your peace. And Lord, we pray for those in authority, for every leader in our nation, that would give them the wisdom and the discernment that they need. We pray that their hearts would be directed first to you, then that they would recognize where their true help and strength comes from. We ask that you guide and guard them and guide and direct them, that they would be their refuge, that you would be their refuge and a place of peace. We pray that you surround them and us with wise counsel, that they would be humble and kind and patient and loving through their actions and their words. We pray that in their faith and in you, that it would be unwavering, strong, resolute, and firm. And now, gracious God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we depart in peace. <laughs>